Good evening, Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Cold Forged, viewing a match between Cybernetic Pony and Adam Dididia. Now, that last name may not be very familiar because he is actually a fairly new player, but let's get started regardless. So, Adam Dididia is starting in the top left corner of the map. Currently choosing his species, Cybernetic Pony in the bottom left corner of the map is going immediately for CISO. And Adam Dididia is also going for CISO, this is a pure CISO mirror. On Cold Forge, which we haven't really seen in a while, just gonna go over it a little bit. So the basic aspect, you have the main bases, the top left and bottom right in the center. Then you also have expansions over to the bottom right, that's infantry only. This expansion as well is basically infantry only. I believe this ramp might be vehicle pathable now. This large expansion covered by an observation hub, as well as this one here, which are meant to be capturable, but the vanilla version of this map does not have these capturable. An older version had them just automatically on ally to everyone, but the current version does not. And there's also a backyard expansion for both players, which has a backdoor of its own, which I believe is now vehicle accessible as well. Used to be only inventory accessible, it might still only be inventory accessible, but we'll see. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony at the 134 mark is going for... I'm very quickly going for an expansion, getting resource processor out over in side expansion, very near his main base. Adam Yudidi, on the other hand, is only getting four RPs in his main base. He doesn't appear to be expanding too quickly from there, though he is about a minute down from Cybernetic Pony. And he is sending a couple scouting units over to see what Cybernetic Pony is up to. Well, Cybernetic Pony scouting units passing through the center, to point out, means that everyone can see what he's up to. Adam Yudidi knows where Cybernetic Pony's forces are, and actually right now Adam Yudidi is inside the scouting radius of the Spire, so both players know where their scouting forces are and where the scouting forces of their opponents are. This very important aspect of this map is the fact that the center is basically fully visible to all players. And they are about to engage. You see that Amidea did get a slight advantage in his engagement position, but it looks like Cyber Pony jumping forward, not even paying attention to that fight. Probably should, though. It looks like Amidea is going to be winning in that fight. No, he's not, actually. He's able to get out of there. It looks like he, it's hard to say exactly what went on, but it looks like his forces just got focused down quickly enough without damaging the special ops in the back. Probably the special ops is healing the marine, but it doesn't matter. Adam Didier moving out of the way, avoiding that fight completely, or trying to. Cybernetic Pony is coming in and will be able to deal with that. And I... Okay, anyway, for those watching, you may have noticed that the stream quality is considerably higher than it used to be. I've moved and... My new place, I have 10 megabit up internet, which currently I'm just doing 4 megabits up. So anyone watching the live stream, if it's stuttering, I apologize. 4 megabits is supposed to be Twitch's standard, which means I guess their downsampling will automatically bring it down to levels that are a bit more manageable for people who don't have as good download speeds. But it is 4 megabits per second, and of course it will be put on YouTube. I'll just have it go directly from Twitch to YouTube. and. It also is, if you might notice, my voice is a little bit more echoey. Sounds like I'm almost speaking into the world itself because of how live this place is. Actually, I suppose it actually doesn't work. It's more when you have a dead room that it sounds huge than when you have a live room. So, I might look into ways of deadening this place out, but for now, hopefully it's not too distracting. And back to the game, Cybernetic Pony is apparently successfully managing to get around Adam Yudidia's forces and get into his base. Neither player really focusing too much on the economy since then. Adam Yudidia does have an extra resource processor from the last time we saw, and he is building a sixth. Cybernetic Pony, on their hand, has not been building any economy in the front, but he has been building some in his backyard expansion. And he is finally getting Q-Plasma. I don't see any tech coming up yet. Both players focusing fairly heavily on infantry, neither one going for factory. This is the 344 mark for Cybernetic Pony and Adam Yadidia back the 220 mark, also not building more factories. That is not entirely surprising. This map is fairly small. The infantry actually, as we can see, do not have a hard time getting around the map. So an early factory may very well be a risky move. Granted, right now, I'd say both players really should go for Factory. Cybernetic Pony doing exactly that, getting a Factory right by his natural expansion of the front. And Adam Yudidia, on the other hand, about a minute and a half down from there, he is getting another Importer. He is not going for Factory. He might be going for further inventory strategy. But given the amount of resources he has in the bank, I think he's just continuing to try to get resource processors and maybe get a bit of inventory here and there for protection. 
but this might just be savings for later when he gets a factory and just pump out a bunch of units all at once. Not really the best move for CISO, they do not handle that well. For Grekum and Vecchio, it's a great move, but for CISO it's not, because CISO does not have parallel building, you need to build multiple factories in order to do that. Which, building multiple factories is not a bad idea. Later in the game, when you have so many resource processors that you can't afford it, and usually even then it's only two or three factories in practice. Not that we see a lot of players do it, and I'm saying this mostly for Cold Forge. In Cold Forge, it'd be hard to get more than two or three factories worth of resource income, just because there's so few boxes. Every base is only maybe one or two boxes of each type. The main base is well, somewhat generous just because of this backyard expansion, but basically, you have nothing. Cybernetic Pony is continuing to expand forward. He's baiting destruction. He's actually putting out... He has his expansion over here in the center eastern expansion right next to the spire which he is fully healed up that's probably an accident he probably didn't mean to fully actually i don't know how he hopefully healed that up spires should not be healed by special ops as a note special ops are supposed to only be able to heal infantry i don't know if that was a mistake or i don't think i do not believe that this is a full health spire at the start i'm pretty sure both spires are at zero health so i'm not sure why the special op would have healed it it should only heal other infantry it shouldn't be able to heal buildings. That might be an oversight. I'm, I've never actually seen that before. Anyway. The factory... There we go. A couple factories are going up. So it looks like Adam Didia is trying to go for a multi-factory opener. Just pushing out a ton of units at once. Starting with Lancers. Not going, neither play are going for tech. Though Cybernetic Pony has more Q-Plasma. He could very easily go for tech. And probably will. It looks like Adam Didia getting quite a bit few infantry units probably will go for ground units and try to build up from there. He is getting a factory. He is actually getting machinery, not getting ground units. So likely we will end up seeing some tornadoes come out. And on a map like this, they are fairly slow. That could work. I mean, it, the size of the map does help. Just because if they're slow units, they have a hard time getting around. And we haven't seen either. Well, we haven't seen any of those units come up yet because the machinery research not quite done. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has not gone for any tech yet. He is actually getting a lot of money in the bank. Not sure if he expects to just build up ATHCs and go. This is a fairly solid strategy for the most part for ATHC rush, though. Given that Amy Didia knows exactly what's coming and has some lancers set up, it. Oh no! Cybernetic Pony is going very quickly for gate tech. Not even trying anything else. Well, actually, he might have been going for gate tech. It looks like he's... I don't see any yellow on the timeline, so he might have just cancelled that out. But if he is saving money, that would make sense. Gate tech is a common thing to save money for. It's just, with Adam Didi going for this multiple factories opener, I was almost expecting that he would just... Well, Samurai Pony would be doing a similar multi-factory opener, trying to get a lot of units pushed out at once, but no, Samurai Pony appears to be wanting to go... Maybe wanting to go for gate tech. I do not see any yellow on the units created bar, which means no research, so I think Cyber Pony has avoided that. And watching the stream, I think... Okay, for those watching the stream, anyone who has a hard time watching it, I believe in the bottom right corner, it has... Or I thought in the bottom right corner it had a option for quality. Although, I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure there is a quality downscaling option, though. That's... That is one thing, keep in mind. I might need to drop the upload rate, I guess. We'll find out. But this is still a bit, little bit of a test. I have done a bit of testing on this setup. 4 megabit up is the Twitch recommendation. Well, Twitch recommended maximum. And I suppose it could go lower, but I don't want to go any lower than like 2. Anyway, I'm getting distracted, not paying attention to the game. So Cybernetic Pony appears to have gotten Gate Tech around the 720 mark. And that is still a little early. I don't know if he's planning on going for Chrono Cores right out of the gate there, as it were. I don't see... I mean, I do see a fair amount of resources being harvested. He has a lot of money in the bank. He has... Well, he's further than the 950 mark, has Gate Tech up. I don't see any mechs even. That's the thing. He doesn't have any mechs built out of this factory. He doesn't have any mechs being built out of the factory. I don't know where they are, because he needs those. You need mechs to build any of the gates that you get from gate tech. I don't know why he isn't getting that. It's kind of surprising. Adam Didi, on the other hand, not going for that at all. He is also not going... You know, he might have just gone for machinery because it's the one on the left. 
if you look at the way the tech is set up, it was machinery, grannies, and it looks like it's a logical progression of machinery all the way up. But really, aerospace is the only tech that requires machinery. Ground units is fine on its own, and the way that Anime Didia had started out, I would expect ground units to have been what he'd gone for. But no, he's not doing that, and a tornado would actually be fairly handy right about now. Unfortunately, he does not have one of those. He does have the money to build one. He should build one, but he doesn't appear to be. On the other hand, Cybernetic Pony is getting a gate of some kind. It looks like he is getting a teleporter. Not a bad idea. He has his armory here. Probably going to build a bunch of infantry and send them all in. Though really he could build anything and send them all in. Getting Mar actually Mar tanks. That another good idea. Although it looks like those are just being marched straight into the base rather than being teleported in. But a common strategy, though somewhat old one, was to build a teleporter in your base. Actually, build slingshots near your opponent's base and send infantry near there and slingshot them all in. Like 20 or 30 infantry. And just slingshot them right in the center of your opponent's base. Because the infantry would basically... Infantry are very powerful, but very low range, so if you teleport them in, the range disadvantage is out the window, but they still have their damage. It's extremely powerful. They're also quite frail, but when you have 20 or 30 of them, they don't go down that quickly. Nowhere near quickly enough to save your base, oftentimes. However, we haven't seen that very often. Even when it was used, it was a rare thing. A couple of games you saw with it, not very many. But it appears that Cybernetic Pony is possibly going for that. He's definitely getting some trials. He is getting a chronoporter on top of the teleporter, so he is going for a unplayable past teleport attack. Chronoporting them back and then teleporting them once they arrive at the destination time. Thus, why he built the teleporter first. Once again, again though, he could still be doing it with infantry or could be doing it, like I said, anything really. It's just he's marching a lot of units and he's rallying a lot of units near the base. He's not keeping them in his own base for later teleportation or later chronoportation. Of course, what he might be doing is going for an attack and then running back to base, chronoporting the units back, and then teleporting them in so that they help themselves out. So trying to go for essentially a feedback loop with CISO, which is very difficult to pull off compared to Grekum, but if you can pull it off, it would be very powerful. And Anime Didia is prepared for this attack, though he does a few tornadoes up he is getting rid of these Martanks coming from the east, and the ATCs and Tornados from the west are doing a fair amount of damage. But even then, Adam has a... Actually, he has Gate Tech as well at this point. The 11... He gets it at the 10.30 mark, so he is getting it a fair bit later than, than Cybernetic Pony is. But Cybernetic Pony is going to be... Not using it right now. He doesn't have any units in the base to use it with. He has some resources with which to use it, but no units. Like I said, though, he may be moving these back. And Anime Didi, on the other hand, has no gates and no tech at this point. We're at the 10-17 mark. We jump back a minute and a half or so. He is just now getting gate tech. And from there, he's going to need to take another two or three minutes. So he's going to be around here by the time, like around the 12-minute mark or so. Or not even the 12-minute, the 13-minute mark by the time he actually gets the gate tech to become useful. Gets the teleporters and chronoporters and whatever he needs to use that. Because right now, he doesn't have any of those things. And Cybernetic Pony... Looks like, actually, Adam Didia might be trying to fund this off a bit early. He... Uh, I'm not sure if he is going for this. He is going for preemptive strike. He is trying to get rid of the ATCs before the attack, and we'll be doing a fairly decent job of that. However, Cybernetic Pony is liable to be pulling off a Chrono Board anytime now, but he is not doing so. I don't know why he's not doing so. I'm actually quite surprised at the fact that he's not doing so. Why is he not doing so? Come on, it's, it's right there. You, you have... Like I said, I expected he would have moved these units back and then sent Chrono Clones in to handle the fight, possibly flanking with the Chrono Clones. But I don't see any of that happening. I mean, he is flanking fairly well with the Mar Tanks, but he's just not building a lot of units, period. He's actually quite a ways in the past that might... That would explain why he's not building a lot of units. He has no Chrono Energy with which to do so. So Anime Didia has a very powerful defense going on. He did lose an Importer, but it's not the biggest deal. He has a lot of units already in play. So he doesn't need that importer as much as he would have if he hadn't built these units already. But even then, he has apparently lost gate tech. He lost it earlier, did not build it, but must have built some other units instead and lost their funds for it. He could start it now, but really wouldn't be... It'd be an okay idea. He does need to get it fairly soon. He can't go without it for too much longer, because if he does, then he'll just end up basically losing the game, because Cybernetic Pony can just chronicle back and take over the timeline. Granted, with CISO, it's a lot harder than, say, with Grekum. Once again, Grekum are considered the masters of time for a reason. 
but it's still something that is a big threat. It's still something that enemy Didia has to deal with. Either by getting gate tech or by just striking this Chrono Quarter before it does anything. Given that Cybernetic Pony has been hanging around a lot in the Unplayable Past, I'd say that striking the Chrono Quarter, is, or not in, but near the Unplayable Past, losing a lot of Chrono Energy that way, striking the Chrono Quarter directly is probably the way to go. It, but then even then, Cybernetic Pony might send back some units and just try to make sure the Paradox resolves in his favor. On defense, CISO is definitely very tough when it comes to Chrono Quarters, because they can... Well, they can Chrono Quarter right there. They have all the units. They can duplicate the units. Their Chrono Quarter is right there. They don't have to worry about the units having to move back before chrono boarding in order to meet up with themselves and reinforce themselves. But when they're inside their own base, they are just there. The reinforcements happen automatically. So that's not at all a concern. However, once again, Cybernetic Pony building some Mar tanks. He has ground he has no ground units! He does not have the ability to make twin Mars. He does not have ground units researched. And Adam Didia does appears to be mostly for the Marines. The Marines have more powerful weapons when you have ground units, the plus 13 in parentheses there. That is with ground units. Note that that's damage for 5 seconds, so they actually it increased their DPS by about 2.6. Which, given they have 11 to begin with, so it goes 11 to 13.6, but it doesn't matter. There we go, Samurai Pony, there is his attack, and surprisingly not teleporting this Tornad in after chronoporting it back. I'm not sure, maybe the players played with the Chronoport Q being removed on Chronoport, or the action queue being removed on Chronoport, so he can't do an uppercut like that. But he certainly doesn't have any... Well, he's certainly not teleporting at that point. There we go. Okay, now he's teleporting. Actually, what am I saying? He couldn't have removed the, the action queue because it was moving as part of an queued attack. So anyway, there we go. Saturday Pony is using the Tornado correctly this time around, and Adam Didia is going to have a much harder time. His, Thankfully for him, I suppose, he did not take his backyard expansion, because that's where the Tornado went to. Saturday Pony, once again, jumping back to the past, double-checking that he has everything set up properly. And re chronoporting that Tornado into this back base and not actually doing anything. Like I said, no expansion has been made there, and Saturday Pony is now aware of this. He needs to fix that, but he doesn't have... Well, the Chronoport departures in the playable past. He can't do anything about that at all. Note that on this... Level the unplayable past edge acts as a time wave. Now, right now, it's a little bit hard to tell because the unplayable past is actually not where it should be. Oh no, it's just the, it's the player's unplayable past. Wherever the player cannot hit any further in the back is a time wave. You see this little blue line on the time wave. It's a map dependent property which Cold Forge has on. So it's impossible to make edge attacks that don't involve chrono boarding happen. This just means players can't be quite so sneaky. But it doesn't matter, Enemy Didia going for a direct assault and doing just fine. Able to take care of Cybernetic Pony's defenses fairly well. Although, a frigate coming in and that will be able to take out the Tornads without issue. So never mind, what I said before about fending off the defenses is completely false. Cybernetic Pony able to get back at him and stop the assault coming in. Now Cybernetic Pony, of course, was attacking in the unplayable past. Did not appear to deal much damage, actually. There's no blue on his time over here. No, he didn't. He dealt a little bit of damage in the blue time over that's coming up. Once we see that happen, and then we'll know what's going on, but he... Let's see what damage he dealt here. Oh, so it looks like Adam Didia did in fact go to expand. That was a bad idea from the looks of it. Cybernetic Pony's Chronoport appears to have paid off there as a way of intercepting that. However, that appears to be more of a late thing. It's not... It's just an automatic teleport, or either automatic or just order. But anyway, the, these RPs were teleported in. They were not just built there, so it's not a complete waste. I mean, the RPs definitely paid for themselves at that point. It's a bit of a shame that they are being lost, but they are being really lost, and one of them is going to be able to survive. The Toronto being pushed back. Cybernetic Pony not going for any further Chrono Port at this point, and once again, not going for a lot of units. Apparently having lost that Macrofab up here as well. At 1638 mark, both players are fairly passive. Though Cybernetic Pony continued to expand a little bit to the... Actually, this isn't an expansion. This is teleporting his own RPs. He teleported a bunch of his own RPs over to this west side expansion, which neither player can well neither player can see without having units there already. Though given that Cybernetic Pony only has the RPs and their vision range is, as you can see, very tiny, basically both players are blind to that area. But Cybernetic Pony has it. So Cybernetic Pony, as has been the case this entire game, has a resource advantage and a fairly decisive one. Though Adam Didia has been taken advantage of there we go, there's the imagery teleport. He's taking advantage of his unit advantage that he had this entire game, and dealing a huge amount of damage inside of 
Cybernetic Pony's base, taking out the Frigus. The Tornado, however, is a big threat, but the tanks will be able to take care of it. But it is going back, it is going to be trying to defend against this, and I expect it will actually do a fairly decent job. But we'll see what happens once one of the players goes back to see it. I think it might be on the blue time wave that's coming along. I don't believe it's on the red time wave. So, very nice teleport there. Probably could use more infantry, though. I think that only having the half dozen there was not nearly enough, especially with the threat of chrono boarding. Which has been realized, and which we will see the effects of soon enough. Actually, it looks like the red time wave is what's carrying that chrono port. And Enemy Didia losing all of his forces that came in, not dealing any damage. No, never mind. This is different. This is not the attack. This is the assault right here. This damage being dealt to him is separate. He must have chronoported back and then teleported straight into Enemy Didia's base. So we'll see the red time of W Tornad inside of Enemy Didia's base, just smashing it to pieces with no units to defend against it. And possibly getting, looks like it is getting rid of the units in question because the damage is going away. So now the red time of coming along, and we will see that. In D no. Adam Didia did not lose his main base, he only lost the side base here. Still a fair amount of damage. Apparently lost all the imagery that he was going to send. A little bit surprising there that the assault was basically preempted by this. But I guess that is where his imagery were. Which means he does not have that assault coming in. Though we could still send in, in the tanks. The Tornados would be a bad idea. The Frigates would get in the way and would kill everything. The tanks, however, might not be such a bad idea. What I'm wondering though is, where are the frigates? Saturday Pony had a bunch of frigates here, and I don't think he lost everything. No, I don't believe he lost everything. That teleport was, we saw it canceled in the timeline. But it looks like it might be actually, no, it's not coming back. This is, this is from Saturday Pony's point of view. There is more damage being dealt further in the past. He's losing quite a few units. And Adam Didia does have a chrono portal, so I'm guessing these, to these tornados are probably chrono ported back and used for defense, though they might have just been chronoport back. We do have some that are being teleported in for offense, but clearly something else happened here, and let's see, that is exactly what happened, they were teleported in, the teleport happened once again, and it looks like a chronoport mixed with the teleport, very nicely done, so Adam Didia able to possibly get rid of Cybernetic Pony's base, but Cybernetic Pony still has a chance to defend, or no he doesn't, the blue time of carrying the destruction of Cybernetic Pony's chronoporter, this is pretty huge, though Cybernetic Pony may have other means of rebuilding. He does have Marine over here, that will work. He has tons of resources in the bank. 500, 520 LC, 692 QP. So he's fairly healthy as far as that's concerned. But what really matters is the fact that he has nothing else. So Enemy DDA does not have a lot of economy. And Cybernetic Pony is trying to get back at this and it looks like Enemy DDA is losing a Paradox fight. Tornads and Frigates coming back here to try to deal with what was here and being chronoported back, and they appear to be stopping this assault from happening in the first place, so Anime Didia appears to be depending on a paradox resolving in his favor, and the red time wave looks bad for him. Yeah, it looks like he is going to be in a really bad spot right now, so Cybernetic Pony getting his base back either on the red time wave or the green time wave, and it looks like it is not on the green time wave, but it will be on the red time wave. We'll see that very shortly once this green time wave comes along from Adam Didia's point of view, the 2040 mark. He's able to defend fairly well, but the green time wave will carry some of the truth. And that tells us that he actually did defend fairly well. But so did Cybernetic Pony. Cybernetic Pony keeping his base intact and not losing anything. So Cybernetic Pony once again able to act. However, one thing to bear in mind is Cybernetic Pony does not have a lot of production structures in play which means he can't easily use the resources he's built up. Because the thing is, when you lose... He's building a lot of production structures to make up for it, though. But when you lose your base, even if it's echoed out like that, you can't produce anything. So there is still a period of meta time where your opponent is able to act, and you're basically dead in the waters. One of the reasons why Echo Chronoports, just chronoporting a unit, and then going back to the and chronoporting again, and keeping, keeping on doing that, and assaulting with that unit, even though the chronoport will ultimately not go through, is extremely powerful because it causes your opponent to be unable to act for precious meta time. And by the time they finally are able to act, all their buildings and everything are back where they were when they started getting destroyed, but that's now two or three minutes into the unplayable past, which means that they're now still three minutes behind, they have to rebuild all this stuff, and they're trying to burn Chronergy at the unplayable past edge to do this. So Cybernetic Pony at a slight disadvantage as a result of this. Well, Adam Didia, I'm not sure if he took advantage of this. He did expand a fair bit to the southwest. And he is going for another deep teleport assault, which losing his MFP right away, but that's 
that's probably pretty bad, actually. That that's definitely a blow. Still going for the bit surprised he's not chronoporting back this or teleporting back this frigate, but he might be chronoporting it back. Actually, he might be chronoporting back this entire attack force. From the looks of it, that doesn't seem to be the case. He didn't use a lot of chrono energy to do that chronoport. And let's see, he is. No, he is teleporting, not able to chronoport due to lack of resource. No, that's a mech. That's this mech trying to build something. Probably a defense turret, not able to do so due to lack of resources. And Cybernetic Pony at the 2237 mark, not too worried about this assault, which he really should be because it's just teleported in once again. Anime Data appears to be going for a chronoport here, but not able to do so. He has. His view has fallen into the Ampilo Pass. He's unable to really do much to that. And the Sprint goes down, but unfortunately, the Sprint not going down in time. It does go down, but between the MFBs and the, torn the Tornaz, there's no way Anime Data can get out of this. The MFBs are basically just dealing damage, but one of them healing out of the combat. That that nullifies this entire attack. Enemy Data just threw away all those forces. Getting a heavy cruiser, I think it's a little early for that. He doesn't have anything to support that with. I mean, they are powerful units on their own, but not powerful enough in this case. And he's continuing to send in more and more forces. Well, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has apparently managed to rebuild. He's... Still got a lot of money in the bank, but that's okay. At this point, that's fine. He might be losing it due to undermining. So having it in the bank is not a terrible idea. However, he does have a... Well, he does have an expansion over to the west. It was has one over to the east, which is fairly well developed, with a bunch of Tornads defending it. And also the one in the back, which is still going strong. And his main base, of course, has been almost completely mined out, except for this cube plasma crate. And once again, another Chronoport. Admi Didia does not have a Chronoport right now. Just want to double-check that. But... Cybernetic Pony clearly going for one of his own as soon as he gets the Chrono Energy to do it, which is not going to be anytime soon. Once we see the Chrono Energy bar go up... But no, he appears to be doing it one at a time, rather than doing it all in a row. And is he going to be teleporting? Yes, he is! Teleporting straight into Adam Didia's base. And Adam Didia is prepared to defend against this. Does have a Frigate in place. But that Frigate, if it starts getting attacked, will go down. However, it is not getting attacked directly. The Tronaut's finally going for it, but they are losing and... Cybernetic Pony's attack also failing. I'm a bit surprised neither player has sent in frigates to try to counter what their opponent must inevitably have, which is frigates. But no, neither player has decided to send back frigates with their chronoported assault forces. So in both cases, or in all cases so far, defense has worked out just fine. Which is actually a little bit surprising. I mean, it's good on these players for having nice prepared defenses, but at the same time, it's kind of silly that they aren't setting up the unit common combinations, compositions to break those defenses. A little bit surprising, a little bit embarrassing. But still, their defenses are holding out, which is impressive. In Chrono Warfare, that's very important. Having prepared defenses and making sure that you don't lose all your units to, and all your buildings, to an uppercut. And once again, another just teleport attack, not an uppercut this time, going towards this backdoor expansion. But it might be a little bit too late. There was already a lot of resources harvested from these crates, so Enemy Didia not really getting a whole lot from that attack. He was able to get rid of a few RPs, not bad, but it might have been a little bit too late. And that's this is from Cybernetic Pony's point of view. Enemy Didia, on the other hand, is at least not really doing too much. He's building up more units. He's getting some more tanks, getting some regular tanks. Probably gonna looks like he may be going for a full on ground attack force. Tanks, more tanks, possibly twin Mars, and then from there. Going for a combined ground, anti-ground, anti-air assault force. The tanks would work fairly well against air, though ATHCs are a bit better for cost against air. And JRC pointing out in the chat that enemy DDS should be chronoporting these units, and yes, he should, but he doesn't have a lot of them yet. Actually, I would say he shouldn't be chronoporting them. He doesn't have enough to really break through Cybernetic Pony's defenses. He kind of does, but he doesn't really know that. Especially if he goes over to this expansion, he, he'll lose his air units right away to those mechs, and the MFBs will heal each other quite well, and the Turret will take care of everything. And it looks like he is actually teleporting in this base, so we will see what's going on there. And you will see that actually one of the MFPs is going down very quickly. The Tornads not getting attacked directly. The mech's not going straight for them, actually. Going for the ground units instead, which is rather foolish, but good for Adam Yadidia. So he might be going for a chronoport assault on that base right now. But nope, continue to scout, trying to figure out what exists, what Cybernetic Pony has, what he has laid out. Well, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, he does have a chronoport further in the past, but he doesn't have any chronoports going on right now. Now, he, of course, does not have as much... Well, he doesn't have as much QP. Surprisingly, though, he 
Oh, I see. He's building a lot of units. That's why. He has another Chronoporter Teleporter pair over to the northeast as well, which is very good. Now, Adam Dating, on the other hand, dealing a ton of damage. Looks like just from a teleport attack. Over here, finding the Chronoporter, finding the Chronoporter Teleporter pair. Should be able to get rid of it. However, given that Saturday Pony has two of these pairs, this is very important. Right now, Saturday Pony can actually save this base from here without risking Paradox. This is extremely important, and it means that Adam Diddy is at a distinct disadvantage. Even though it does have a unit advantage, and he has been actually pretty clever recently in trying to scout out, making sure he knows what Saturday Pony has. Saturday Pony has map control. He has two pairs, or two Chrono Porters, and that is huge. The Teleporter, on top of that, is... That's bonus. I mean, that does mean he can more easily save the other base. But that alone is huge. I mean, this is... As we can see right now, actually, he's chronoporting back... Surprisingly, he's chronoporting back units from this base, rather than chronoporting back units from this other base to help out. A little bit surprising. And getting all the tech... Getting ground units last, actually, so he can finally get Twin Mars. But he got specials as well. He might... I don't know if he's going to go for Temporal Solution Shield, but he could... That almost would be a good idea right now with this Tornado, but he is not doing so. No, instead he is chronoporting back the Tornado to help defend which, once again, runs into Paradox Country, but... Well, there it goes fairly quickly. Helping get rid of the Heavy Cruiser, but not by much. Like I said, he really needs to chronoport from, and teleport from this base over here to save this one over here. This is the reason why he can avoid, he have Paradox-free bootstrap saving. And another teleporter over in this base as well. No good of the chronoporter, though, and it looks like Adam Yudidi will be able to get rid of this chronoporter. Cybernetic Pony not moving to save it from the other base. I'm very surprised at this. Moving back MFBs to help out. But that's really not enough. He he has the units to save it from... Well, okay, a couple units, but still some extra forces to save it with. And he has resources in the bank with which to build them. And he's burning a lot of Q-Plasma on these chronoports. Tanks... No, mechs coming in, sorry, not tanks, what am I saying? Mechs coming in to try to deal with this. Only one of them survives long enough to even chronoport back. No, he's really got to chronoport here first, and then teleport in. Now, Adam Didia basically not being punished for the disadvantage of having only one chronoporter and not two. Cybernetic Pony not taking full advantage of this for defense, so Adam Didia will be able to take care of that from the looks of it. Well, maybe. Actually, it's hard to say. It looks like even with that Cybernetic Pony has managed to chronoport back just enough to push away the forces, so he may have been able to regardless, stop this from happening. Despite the fact that it was a suboptimal way of doing it, he may still have managed to do it. Now, Adam Didi, on the other hand, looks like he is moving back some RPs. He has ran out of resources over here. And these paths are vehicle pathable. I was wondering that before, and it turns out that they are, in fact, vehicle pathable. He has also found Cybernetic Pony's western base. Very good move to go there. And Cybernetic Pony... Jumping back to 2746 mark, just chronoported back here, and it doesn't appear that he's actually saving this forces with the units chronoported back from this base, but he is still using this base as a staging point to attack Adam Yudidia's main base, so that's also a good move. Does that successfully stop Adam Yudidia from attacking the eastern base because he has no units with which to do so? And Adam Yudidia actually building a teleporter inside of Cybernetic Pony's expansion over here. Not sure why it won't last long. The mechs will eventually take care of it. They don't deal a whole lot of damage against ground units, but enough. And Twinmar. Here we are. Twinmar finally from Adam Yudidia. First one to have one. Cybernetic Pony not building any of his own. I'm a little bit surprised at this. I'm actually fairly surprised at this. He got ground units a while ago. He might just, maybe just got it all for completion's sake. You don't get an achievement for building all the techs, so I... I hope he's using them for something. Because he has no marines, in, or he has one marine in play. He has the mechs, which will deal extra damage thanks to ground units, but mostly against air. He... actually, not even that much extra damage to begin with. And... he has no Twin Mars. That's kind of the point of ground units. So he's getting more marines, so he is actually making some use of that tech. Surprisingly though, no use of specials. I don't see any nanite. Actually, I don't see any heavy tanks to begin with for nanites. I don't see any use of Temporal Assault and Shield, and it looks like Enemy Didia is getting smashed up by this, and is throwing in the towel, not quite able to deal with these forces being chronoported back. Cybernetic Pony is able to take this game, but that was definitely, as Cybernetic Pony says, very close. That was an extremely close game, and fairly long as well, but certainly showed up chronoporting for CISO. I was actually kind of surprised it got that long.
Very rarely do you see Corona Porting for Seasone. I mean, a Seasone Mirror maybe, but on a map this small, to get Corona Porting, especially as early as it was gotten, that is. Well, I should say Gate Tech as early as it was gotten. That was surprising. But yeah, Cybernet Pony had. He did have a decisive advantage early on from economy. He didn't have the QP advantage, though. That was one thing Enemy Didia had, which he didn't take advantage of. He could have recorned for units, possibly even just gone for some perma cloning, really. But he didn't do any of that, so that is the game. I hope you enjoyed that, and that is going to be all for tonight. So I hope that worked well. I hope you enjoyed watching that, and hope you enjoyed the improved stream quality. So thank you all for watching. Have a good night.